Today we will discuss 10 MCQ on topic isolos curve parameters and isolos distributions. First question is a plot of the volume of a given structure receiving a certain dose or higher as a function of dose is the definition of and the correct option is option B cumulative integral dvh. The plot of the volume of a given structure receiving a certain dose or higher as a function of dose is the definition of integral dvh. Differential dvh is a plot of volume receiving a dose within a specified dose interval as a function of dose. An isodose chart is a dose distribution in the form of isodose curves or surfaces showing regions of uniform dose, high dose or low dose. And a PIMS eye view is a view of patient from the target to the beam portal showing patient anatomy within the treatment beam. The next question is, which of the following dose volume histogram has been found to be more useful and more commonly used? And the right answer is option B, cumulative DVH. Of the two forms of DVH, the cumulative DVH has been found to be more useful and more commonly used than the differential DVH. Next question is, which of the following scenarios will not include a DVH? And the correct answer is option D, electron clinical setup. A three-dimensional image set like a CT scan of the patient is needed to create a isodose curve distributions and DVH since they are needs to be structured and a dose distribution. Electron clinical setup do not require a CT scan or any drone structure. During a clinical setup, only hand MU calculation are needed. Rule of thumb is no structure contours, no DVH. Next question. Which of the following isodose lines typically represent the field edge or border? The correct answer is option C, 50% isodose line. The 50% isodose line typically represents the field edge or border. The next question is, which of the following statements are correct? And the correct answer is option A. The dose at depth is greatest on central axis of the beam and gradually decreases towards the edge of the beam. The dose at depth is greatest on the central axis of the beam and gradually decreases towards the edge of the beam. Remember that near the field as is, the dose rate rapidly decreases as a function of lateral distance from the beam axis. The next question is, which of the following has the greatest influence in determining the shape of isodose curves? And the correct answer is option B, flattening filter. And the flattening filter has the greatest influence in determining the shape of the isodose curves. Without the flattening filter, the isodose curve will be conical in shape, showing markedly increased X-ray intensity around the central axis and a rapid reduction transversely. Modern linear accelerators actually allow the treatment with flattening filter-free beams. The reason for this is that the flattening filter attenuates the beam which lowers the dose rate, makes the beam harder and adds contamination to the beam. With the increased use of IMRT and SBRT, the size of fields is becoming smaller, so the peak dose distribution of a flattening filter-free beam is not a problem. Additionally, new planning system has model the peak dose distribution therefore treatment with then flattening filter free beam is not problematic removing the flattening filter allows for an increased dose rate and less beam contamination the next question is the function of flattening filter is and the correct answer is option c to make the beam intensity distribution relatively uniform across the field and the trimmers are used to reduce the penumbra of the therapy beam and a monitor chamber measure and verifies precious amount of radiation delivered to the patient. Finally, the clistron is a high power microwave amplifier used to power high energy linear accelerators. Next question is the most commonly used isodose beam modifying devices and the correct answer is option B, wedge. Next question is which of the following dose is used by NIST and or an ADCL? And the correct op answer is option A, absolute dose. NIST stands for National Institute of Standards and Technology. ADCL stands for Accredited Dosimetry Calibration Laboratory. Next question is, and the last one. The lateral distance between the two specified isodose curves at specified depth is used to estimate and the correct answer is option B, trans 
transmission pin number. The lateral distance between the two specified residues curve at a specific depth is used to estimate the physical pin number. The transmission pin number is a region irradiated by the photons which are transmitted through the edge of the collimator block. A beam profile is a graph which represents the dose variation across the field at a specified depth. And tissue lateral effect is the increase of central axis maximum dose near the surface relative to the midpoint dose as the patient thickness increases and the energy decreases. Thank you.